FACO emulsification has grown exponentially, becoming the preferred method for cat track removal since Charles Kelman first introduced it. Although many years have gone by, there are still intimate aspects about FACO actions still to be disclosed. This video will reveal unknown aspects about ultrasonic disruption of the crystalline lens, mainly based on the jackhammer effect and especially cavitation. The output of a FACO handpiece is a sinusoidal axial displacement transmitted to the tip of the FACO needle. At a typical oscillating frequency of 40,000 cycles per second, each full cycle of tip motion lasts 25 millionths of a second. During each forward displacement of the FACO tip, one jackhammer impact is delivered to the lens. A power setting of 100% produces a tip travel of 76 microns, with a peak speed of 10 meters per second only impressive if you consider that acceleration is 1600 km per squared second. Lens disruption is accepted to be caused by the combined action of the propulsion of the FACO tip, jackhammer effect, and the cavitation phenomenon produced during tip retraction. Different profiles of cavitation patterns have been proposed for the different shapes of FACO tips based on liquid air interface experiments. The cavitation effect would act disrupting the lens even without the FACO tip ever touching the lens material. This has been specially highlighted for the Kelman tip that would project cavitation waves at unusual angles. We believe these liquid air patterns are misleading and more related to jackhammer effect than to cavitation. But then, what is cavitation? Cavitation is a phenomenon that occurs in liquids in focal areas of very low pressure. It has been compared to the condensation cloud observed when the sound barrier is broken in air. Watch this. As the FACO tip retracts with very high acceleration, the surrounding liquid has to move into the void left by the tip. In areas where pressure drops below the vapor pressure of the liquid, short-lived microbubbles or cavities are created. But how can bubble formation cause damage to tissues? In fact, bubble formation does not cause tissue damage. It is during bubble collapse that damage is caused. During bubble collapse, as the pressure restores, a shock wave is generated that has been blamed for causing the damage. But what causes the shock wave? The origin of the shock wave is a strong microjet originating at a single point in the cavity wall when it starts to collapse. The water jet travels across the bubble at 4,000 feet per second and impacts the opposite side of the bubble wall with a pinpoint pressure of 150,000 pounds per square inch, creating the shock wave. Repetitive action of these forceful microjets is known to damage strong materials such as the steel wall in ultrasonic cleaning tanks. It would be interesting to observe the role of this phenomenon during FACO emulsification. Unfortunately, the fastest cameras in the world do not reach the required bandwidth to allow filming FACO tip motion. Genie! What would you wish of me? Oh well, I wish I could take pictures fast enough to capture an instant in the FACO tip motion cycle. <laughs> Thanks Genie! This allows us to observe the cavitation bubbles halo near the rim of the FACO tip. But Genie, I need an animated sequence of these pictures to appreciate the temporal relation of events. Let me take your order, Johnny Dad. Thanks again, Genie. We can now appreciate that the cavitation halo certainly occurs during the retraction phase of the tip and only if FACO power is above a threshold of 60%. Genie, I have one wish left. Can you add uh, color to the images? We're not through yet! Hang on to your turban, kid! We're Thanks for all, Genie. I knew color would add value to your work. Now that we possess this novel, custom-designed, valuable tool, we can better describe some intimate aspects about FACO tip operation. Normally, an operating FACO needle provides no detail about the fast-occurring temporal events. Our novel method allows us to slow down the apparent motion of the FACO needle, operating in real time.
A cavitation halo appears as a crown surrounding the rim of the round 30 degree tip. We observe no cavitation bubbles projecting away from the tip of the FACO needle. All cavitation occurs during the retraction phase of the motion cycle and above 60% ultrasonic power. The flare tip failed to show external cavitation under 80% power at the tip rim. It did show cavitation bubbles in the rear portion and during forward displacement of the tip when pressure drops in that area. Cavitation bubbles on the silicone sleeve apparently produced no physical damage. A vortex of cavitation was seen related to the ABS port. Cavitation was observed inside the distal portion of the flare tip even below 80% ultrasonic power. A windowed flare tip allowed us to better observe internal cavitation at lower US powers. We could not demonstrate any significant non-contact tissue damage to cataract material when located at 0.3 mm of the rim. The so-called zero-degree angle of projected cavitation was irrelevant to cause damage at distance. Only lens fibers that entered into direct physical contact with the rim of the tip were damaged, showing a neat pattern of cat. Applying maximum ultrasonic power directly to the capsule or excess rim produced no damage to the capsule. What happened to the cavitation monster? The Kelman tip shows particular characteristics. Cavitation bubbles are seen on the posterior surface on projection of the tip and on the anterior surface on retraction of the tip. Also, the needle bends on each cycle showing a lateral displacement of the tip rim covering a wider area. Tissue contact produces emulsification at low powers like if a spoon was removing material due to the mentioned lateral displacement. Only the material that enters direct physical contact is significantly altered and severed. The angle of attack makes the rim apex enter into the lens material like a wedge on occlusion of the tip. The McCool Kelman microtip has the same cavitation and bending patterns observed in standard Kelman tips. The polymer sleeve does not follow in any degree the ultrasonic motion of the McCool tip. A software was designed to keep track of tip parameters such as position, speed and acceleration. Also, non-harmonic distortion, this means deviation from a sinusoidal motion pattern could be documented. This phenomenon was observed at maximum US powers. A recent interesting advance in FACO technology is the Neosonics system which provides a 2 degree lateral displacement of the FACO tip at 100 Hz combined with a standard ultrasound. We analyzed the system in different situations. Standard ultrasound provided the typical findings of cavitation halo. Sonic activity produced a minimal lateral displacement. However, an emerging characteristic of this system was found. Ultrasound boosts the sonic lateral displacement duplicating the area covered by the FACO tip rim. In this way, the jackhammer effect is applied onto different locations on each ultrasonic cycle, improving ultrasound efficiency. We took the challenge of designing a system that could allow simultaneous slow motion imaging of the ultrasonic and sonic displacement produced by the Neosonics handpiece. We succeeded and here present the first ever obtained slow motion image of the Neosonics in action. There are 400 ultrasonic strikes for every single lateral motion cycle. The result is enhancement of ultrasonic efficiency, allowing lower ultrasound powers to remove similar hardness lens material. We could not demonstrate any effect of sonic energy alone on hard lens material. In opposition to theoretical aspects, the role of cavitation, presumably acting as an external, non-contact, lens-disrupting force is questioned in this study. 
This new tool may provide significant insight to FACO emulsification understanding and progress. Thank you.